This is Miss Denti Marga Sukma and you are now in the video discussing about simple present tense. Let's check it out. The video will discuss about the function of simple present tense, the time expressions of simple present tense, the pattern, the example, and also the exercise. Let's go to the first discussion. Simple present tense expresses repeated action or general truth. For example, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Americans celebrate Independence Day on July 4th. Children learn faster when they are interested in what they study. The second function is Expressing non-action, it can be the state or the condition. For example, you look gorgeous. He loves his children. They remember you. The next one, we have time expressions. In simple present tense, we have so many time expressions, but remember, that not all of the sentence having simple present tense use this time expressions. But when you find this in the sentence, you can decide that the sentence might be a simple present tense. For example, every day, every month, always, sometimes, never, frequently, often, usually, Rarely, on Sundays, on Sunday, occasionally. Perbedaan dari on Sundays dan on Sunday adalah jika sebuah hari ditambahi dengan huruf S, maka kegiatan tersebut berlangsung berulang-ulang di hari tersebut. Jadi, terha- jadi sebuah kegiatan terjadi setiap hari minggu. Sedangkan on Sunday itu hanya menerangkan bahwa kegiatan terjadi pada hari Minggu saja. Maybe tidak berulang-ulang. Okay, let's go to the pattern of simple present tense. There are three patterns here. The first one is affirmative, the second one is negative, and the third one is interrogative. Let's start with the affirmative pattern for simple present tense. The first pattern is affirmative. If you have the plural noun or the pronoun they, we, I, you, it should be followed by verb one. For example, the students learn English. The subject, the student, It has S in the ending to indicate the plural noun. The second example, we have the pronoun we. We learn grammar. If you have a singular noun or the pronoun she, he, or it, it should be followed by verb one ended by S. For example, The student learns English. The subject shouldn't. It has no S in the ending because the student here is singular noun. Meanwhile, the, the verb should be added by S. So we have learns here. The second example is she learns grammar. The subject she is the singular noun. So it should be followed by learns ended by S. Oke, okay, kedua contoh tersebut menggunakan verb atau main verb dalam menjelaskan sebuah kalimat. Namun untuk poin berikutnya akan ada subject diikuti oleh linking verb dan diikuti juga oleh complement. Jadi pada tiga pola berikutnya yang akan diserangkan dia ada subject, kemudian linking verb. Ya linking verb itu bisa berupa to be. Ataupun uh, kata-kata yang bisa 
menerangkan subjeknya. For example, we have appear, we have taste, seem, sound, etc. Yang dituliskan di sini merupakan to be sebagai linking verb. Nanti akan menghubungkan subjek dengan complement atau pelengkap. Complement dalam bahasa Inggris bisa berupa kata sifat, kata benda, noun phrase, atau prepositional phrase. For example, when you have the subject they, we, you, or the plural noun, it should be followed by are. For example, the students are active. The students subject are di sini sebagai linking verb and active is adjective. The second example we have they are in the classroom. They is the subject are here is the linking verb in the classroom is the prepositional phrase. The second subject is I. I should be followed by am. For example, I am happy. I am here. Jadi setelah am merupakan pelengkapnya. The third one, when you have the singular noun atau kata benda bentuk tunggal or the pronoun she, he or it, it should be followed by is. For example, The student is active. The student here is the singular noun. Hanya satu siswa saja. Is active. Active is the adjective. The second example is she is in the classroom. She adalah subjek, is adalah linking verb dan in the classroom adalah prepositional phrase. Jadi perbedaan pada pola di sini yaitu untuk garis merah seperti Poin 1 dan poin 2 menggunakan main verb dalam menjelaskan kalimat lengkapnya. Sedangkan pada garis kuning atau tiga poin di bawah tersebut menggunakan linking verb atau to be. Sehingga setelah to be atau linking verb tersebut diikuti oleh complement atau pelengkap. Bisa kata sifat, kata benda, noun phrase maupun prepositional phrase. Let's go to the second pattern of simple present tense, that is negative pattern. When you have the plural noun, atau kata benda jama, or the pronoun they, we, I, you, it should be followed by do. Do here is the auxiliary verb. And do should be followed by not. For the negative pattern and verb zero, or we can call it as base verb. For example, the students do not learn English. The students subject do not to indicate the negative pattern. Learn is the base verb and English is the object. The second example is we don't learn grammar. The subject we. It is followed by the don't here as the negative pattern. We can write don't using the apostrophe as the contraction of do not. And it should be followed by base verb learn grammar. The second example, when you have the singular noun or the pronoun she, he, or it, It should be followed by does and not to indicate the negative pattern and should be followed by verb zero or the base verb. For example, the student does not learn English. Remember that after does not, we have learn as the base verb, not learns. Okay? The second example, she doesn't learn grammar. Doesn't is the contractions of does not okay the next pattern when you have the plural noun or the pronoun they we you it should be followed by are and not to indicate the negative pattern for example 
the students are not active the second example they are not in the classroom and then when you have i it should be followed by am and not for example i am not happy or i am not here the last pattern when you have the singular noun or the pronoun she he it it should be followed by is and not to indicate a negative pattern for example the student is not active or she is not in the classroom you can also use the construction of is not which is isn't to replace is not the third pattern is the interrogative patterns of simple present tense in this pattern you do not start the sentence with the subject you have to start the sentence with do for plural noun they we i or you and followed by base verb for example do the students learn english do we learn grammar the second one we have to start the sentence with does if the subject is the singular noun or the pronoun she he or it it should be followed by verb zero or base verb for example does the students learn english does she learn grammar The next pattern, when you have the WH question, for example, what, who, when, where, why, how, it should be followed by do, does, are, am, and is, followed by the subject, and should be followed by main verb or the complement. It depends on the subject. Okay? For example, why do the students learn English? Why do we learn grammar? Why does the students learn English? Why does she learn grammar? Why are the students active? Why are they in the classroom? Why am I happy? Why am I in the right room? Why is the student active? Why is she in the classroom? You can have the, the, the other examples. Where do the students learn English? When do we learn grammar? Why are the students active? What is your favorite scene? Who are they? How do you spend your weekend? You also have another example of affirmative pattern, negative pattern, and interrogative pattern. The first one, the earth revolves around the sun. The earth does not revolve around the sun. Does the earth revolve around the sun? Why does the earth revolve around the sun? The second example, a beautiful young lady stays at a very luxurious hotel. 
a beautiful young lady does not stay at a very luxurious hotel. Does a beautiful young lady stay at a very luxurious hotel? Why does a beautiful young lady stay at a very luxurious hotel? The third example. They are late. They are not late. Are they late? Why are they late? Let's go to the exercise. Before doing the exercise, you have to know the verb plus ES. For example, when you have the double S for the verb, you will have passes, misses, accesses, kisses, presses, discusses. When you have the ending CH, you have to put ES in the ending. For example, attaches, reaches, touches, punches, teaches, launches. When the verb is ended by SH, it should be added by ES. For example, washes, brushes, accomplishes, wishes, and splashes. When the verb ended with X, it should be followed by ES. For example, relaxes, fixes, boxes, mixes, affixes, and indexes. When the verb ended by O, it should be added by ES. For example, goes, or does, do. Verb ended by PCH, it should be added by ES in the ending for the simple present tense. For example, catches, switches, swatches, watches, matches, and sketches. The exercise is, you have to make the sentence using the verb listed in the slide. Make at least two sentences for the different words. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next occasion.